It is 10 o'clock on the dot, and uh, we'll go ahead and call this meeting on the 8th of April to order. You ready, Christian, to go? All right. Uh, in order to get started on the right track, we'll ask uh, Pastor Tyler Bittner from the Central Baptist Church to please give us some guidance for the day. Yes, sir. If you would, please. Appreciate you having me. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we are so thankful to be here today. Thankful for another day to serve you in this beautiful uh, community, Lord. I'm so thankful for the leadership, the men and the women, uh, Lord, that you've called uh, to serve us, Lord. And I pray that you would just uh, give them the wisdom as they go move forward and uh, make the decisions that need to be made. Lord, I thank you for this great country you allow us to live in. Lord, help us to keep our eyes on you. And Lord, we ask all these things in your son's precious name, who gave his life on the cross for us. In his name, amen. Amen. Thank you very much. And as always, you may stay here if you'd like to. And watch the business being conducted today or you're free to go whichever you wish to do and uh, Commissioner Snuggs I believe it's your turn to say our pledges I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all on the Texas flag Okay, once again, welcome to everybody. We have some guests with us today. Uh, Brandon Gill, who is running for U.S. Congress, wife Danielle, and Marigold. Marigold. Oh, <laughs> the, the boss. <laughs> Do we have any public comments on any agenda items? Chelsea. No. Okay. Uh, we have a presentation of a proclamation declaring April 2024 as County Government Month. And I will read the proclamation. Cook County Commissioner's Court Proclamation declaring April 2010 County Government Month. Whereas county government is the oldest form of local government in the United States, and whereas county government in Texas has been a major partner in providing services to citizens since the early Republic days, and whereas there are 254 counties in Texas providing services to their citizens in cost-effective ways, and whereas counties are on the front line of addressing many of the states and nations most critical issues, including criminal justice system, public safety, transportation, indigent health care, records management, and equitable property tax system, special assistance to the elderly, support for youth programs, emergency management, and the wise use of our natural resources. And whereas counties in Texas provide these and other essential services through the local control of their voters and most often without financial assistance from the state, and whereas the mission of Texas county government is to continue to meet the needs of citizens without placing undue burden on the local taxpayers. And whereas county officials encourage their citizens to participate in all aspects of their county government and to renew their acquaintanceship with the many services that counties provide. And whereas a timely occasion to do so and demonstrate the importance and relevance of county government as a cog and a partner within the local, state, and federal government framework is the 2024 celebration of County Government Fund. Now therefore be it proclaimed that the Commissioner's Court of Cook County does hereby officially declare the month of April 2024 as County Government Month. Well, I'm here. Motion. Motion, Commissioner Snugs. Second. Second, Commissioner Arndt. All in favor? Uh, uh. Any opposed? And there are none. That proclamations and motion passed five to zero. Thank y'all. You out of here? Yeah, you're welcome here. to stay for the whole. She's had enough of this. <laughs> Bye, Marigold. <laughs> Bye, y'all.
Okay, recognition of uh, item number seven is recognition of Cook County employees for being a recipient of the 2023 Safety Achievement Award. Would you identify yourselves, please, and proceed? Elizabeth Hookton, HR Director. Ray Fletcher, Emergency Manager, Fire Marshal, Safety Guy, and that. So, um, for those that aren't aware, uh, TAC and the risk um, reduction and risk management pool is who we fall under for safety and workers comp and accidents and all of that all of our auto insurance and health insurance and all of that so uh, they have a, a safety program or a safety award that recognizes member counties for their commitment to controlling claims costs and developing and improving safety and loss control programs the recipients of the award that were recently honored at TAC uh, County Management and Risk Conference but I couldn't be there because I was at another conference and Ms. Hookton could not be there for family issues. So the award has been placed on court today to recognize all of our employees um, from the bottom to the top. Safety doesn't just happen. It's not just a slogan on a billboard or on a bulletin board. It's, it is from the lowest ranking employee and the newest employee all the way to the, to the top, to the commissioners, the county judge, and, and all of the other elected officials and department heads. And so in Cook County, we have a good group of employees and leaders who um, live through that safety message every day, um, instill it and support it, and that's what helps. And so directly, what is the result? Hopefully a reduction or at least not as big a raise in, in our cost to ensure the county in, in all our different facets. Um, indirectly, it makes just a better work environment. Everybody's healthier, get, has a better day and uh, equipment doesn't break as often if we're not beating it up and tearing it up and wrecking it and uh, people aren't getting hurt and, and they feel like they're supported in, in a safe work environment. So all of that goes to be a part of getting this award. And so we are just the representatives for all the employees and leadership in Cook County that goes the extra mile in the safety re uh, arena to, to do that. And so they did award us a nice plaque with a with a logo on it so that'll be okay uh, we do it because it's the right thing to do not for an award and I'm just glad they recognize us. that's good job well done sir job well done job well done there you go thank you and I've got three pair of eclipse glasses left if anybody needs any what is it eclipse glasses oh is that today <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about I can't even remember Thank you. Item number eight is the consent agenda. The consent agenda includes non-controversial and routine items that the court may act on with one single vote. The judge or a commissioner may pull any item from the consent agenda in order that the court discuss and act upon it individually as part of the regular agenda. I think I'll make a motion we approve the consent agenda. Mr. Snugs makes a motion to pass the consent agenda as is. I'll second the motion. Second, uh, Commissioner Arndt. All in favor? Aye. 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 Are there any opposed? And there are none. The consent agenda passes 5 to 0. Item number nine is to deliberate and consider possible action regarding the approval of the final plat and construction bond for Villa Estates, a proposed 10 lot subdivision in Precinct 3, Commissioner Adam Orton. We've had this one on court before. They went from a 20 to a 10. They've got all their paperwork in order. Uh, this is on County Road 381 out uh, southwest of Vera. Uh, it's going to be a nice project. Uh, I move to approve. We have a motion to approve Commissioner Hart. Second. Second. Commissioner Sicking, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And there are none. Motion passes five to zero. 
Item number 10, deliberate and consider possible action regarding the approval of naming private roads in Preston Hollow, an unrecorded addition at Precinct 2 off of County Road 2119, Preston Hollow, Michaela Way, and Harrison Trail, as shown on the attachments for identification. Commissioner Snuds. This is all for just 911 addressing issues. They are, uh, TTOG wants all these roads named in these private areas, so it's all up to the people that own the roads, so it doesn't have anything to do with the county. Uh, I make a motion we approve it. Motion Commissioner Snugs to approve item number 10. Second. Second. Can we have some discussion there? Just for sure, absolutely. On these private roads, I've got somebody now. It's actually got a. It's going to be a driveway that's currently named. Do we have to approve those? Do we need to? I mean, why do we? Why is it coming to court? If Tcoc's going to have to give. I'm sorry. So they can get the 911 address. I, I get that, but do we have to approve it from to get the address? Why can TCOG not just, we scared we'll lose control of something there? Well, that's just what TCOG says that they need from us before they proceed. Okay, because I've got, I've got one coming up and it's, got a, it's a, got a road name now, but it's literally just a driveway. Do we need to bring that driveway up here for TCOG to get, I mean. So to me, that's a different deal. That, that driveway should have an address off of whatever road it faces. And that's what he wants to change it to. But right now it's got a. Like so that's the resident wanting to do that. Th this, that's that, right. To me, that's a different deal. I don't even know why they would need to name that one. Okay, officially so, through TCOG. So if TCOG asks me personally as the commissioner, then I should be able to just say, hey, we don't have a problem. Give them an address. You guys have you see an I issue with that? I don't foresee an issue with that. Like the next one coming up, it's a bullhook. So that property both sides. So the West side wants the address. You know, that's but you got two different property owners right, there, right? right, right. In mine, it's it's a single property owner. Okay, I just wanted to take now, the opportunity. We're talking about private roads to ask that question. The, the reason I had another one come up where they've had a private road forever, and now there's too many homes on this private road. So T. Cog has said, "Hey, that road needs to be named because we need to split the addresses off." And they're going to ask for a resolution from us on that too. He just said he needs that from the court for him to move forward. So I don't know if it's okay. we can probably investigate that with them a little further. But this is the only uh, <coughs> residence on that road. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. To me, that one doesn't make yeah. any sense. So my my intent would be to call Nathan Voigt with TCOG and say, hey, let the man change it. But I just want to be sure the court's good with it. Okay, thank you. You've got your motion stuff, Judge. Okay, we, have, we had a motion. Do we had a second, I believe, from Commissioner Arndt. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? There are none. Item 10 passes 5 to 0. Item number 11, deliberate and consider possible action regarding the approval of naming a private road in Munster, Texas, owned by Heritage Park of Munster, Texas, Weber Ranch Road, as shown on the attachments for location identification. Mr. Sicking. There again, as I said, it's a road that splits two properties and they need to, for the 911 address, it's not going to abstain from the vote on this because I am on board dirty part. Right now, do you say there's two addresses there, two properties? There's two properties. Okay, will they both get a 911? address then or what's proposed there right now it's just the Weber Ranch okay name of the road Weber Ranch and then they'll, they'll get their address so you need somebody to make the motion other than yourself right. I'll make that motion that we approve and I'll second that yeah. motion Commissioner Hollowell seconded by myself uh, item number 11 all in favor aye, aye. aye. any opposed there are none, and I one abstention. one abstention. Okay, so that motion passes four 
to one abstention. Item number 12, deliberate and consider possible action regarding the quotes for EMS one fire panel alarm upgrade. I'm Wes Reed, I'm chief at the EMS. It's not an upgrade, that system hasn't worked in over two years. Uh, it was a proprietary system when it was installed by the contractor initially, <clears throat> and they have since gone out of business. Uh, Rick has tried real hard to get someone to come in here and work on that thing, and he can't do it. Uh, and that's the reason he went through this route. Uh, but like I said, it's not an upgrade. It's, and they should consider an upgrade from not working to working. <clears throat> but it hadn't been working in over two years. Is this the one where we got three quotes? And Yes, sir. Okay, and one of them was? There was an issue with the quotes last time, as I understand it, it's been worked out now. It has been worked out. That's my understanding. Shelly, uh, auditor would know better than that. Okay. Uh, Shelly, what do you know about that? I don't, haven't seen any updates. Seen any updates. Okay. Wes, is this something that requires a commercial alarm service? Pardon me? Is this something that requires a commercial? Is it just monitoring fire? Yeah, it's fire. That's it. I wonder, is, is this something we could do through something like a Simply Safe monitor, monitoring system? I don't know if it would. I'd have to check the city fire marshal to see if that hits, if that comes up to code, or if they require a, the uh, system that we have. Yeah, I'd just be curious because it would be considerably cheaper, you know, because it's twenty bucks a month to get it monitored and you put your own equipment in, and that's relatively inexpensive. And like I said, I'd, I'd have to check with the uh, fire marshal to see if it uh, comes up to code. And everything. Yes, so it does. But it. City code that it's required. Okay. Okay. I, I would. Is it, Shelley? You're nodding your head. Yes, it is. Yeah, that's why we had to put the sprinkler system in this building. Yeah, but it's a commercial building. Okay. So, so it monitors when the sprinklers goes off? Because, I mean, well, I I'm familiar with Simply Safe. When you get smoked, they immediately notify the fire department. And in this case, they're immediately going to notify the fire department. And the sprinklers are going to activate off the of heat. I, right. I don't know. I'm just, I would just, there's a chance there maybe to save several thousand dollars. Well, it's like we have one over park over there and it's tied in. I mean, to the sprinkler system. Yes, it's all tied together. Not just a, okay, I'm good. I just I just asked the question, guys. Right. I mean, uh, to see if it was worth a worth a thought. Chelsea, did you get any updated quotes? The, the quotes that he gave me are the same quotes that you saw last time. He just got extra information from the three people who gave quotes that I put in the packet. There was an extra sheet in there with all the quotes that say like what each company is going to be giving. To the count. Well, not giving, but providing. What their quote actually covers. Correct. Yeah. Who do we use here at the courthouse? Do we know? Same people. Alarm. Four four arrows or whatever. Four, feathers. Feathers. four, four feathers. feathers. Four feathers, four arrows, you know. I mean they're the cheapest, aren't they? Yeah. Considerably. actually talk to people 
I have not. I'm just basically standing in for Rick. He asked that I show up and give you some history on it. Okay. Um, well, I think we need to get it fixed. I would it's appreciate not fixed. it. Does this come out of maintenance? We would have to. Or does it come out of buildings? I'm just thinking if we got personnel in there and there's things not working and they have a fire. We have any other alarms in there at all? No. So four feathers is not going to put horn strobes in. They're going to reuse system sensors. Golden Triangle is going to put in 12 horn strobes. I mean, I, nobody's mm, notification system is going to put in eight horn strobes and 14 strobe only devices. I don't know what the code requires. I say it's been two years since it's worked. At least, yes. I suppose two more weeks. Of Be a problem. I'd get it fixed sooner and later, like you, Commissioner Arnott said. We got people sleeping in that building. I agree. Been two years, late two weeks. Be sure we're getting apples to apples. Look like you're seeing the discrepancies in specs again, yep. which is not uncommon for us. Be nice if all of them bid the same project. Either what way, it's going to have to come back to court with the budget amendment. Well, why don't I do this? Why don't I get over the fire marshal and get what the requirements are as far as horn strobes or just strobes or floodlights or whatever the city is going to require of it. And if needed, then we can get these three companies to resubmit with those requirements. I think that would be a good idea. What kind of existing systems in there do you know? I don't know what the name of it is, no. I mean, what, is it just lights? Yes, it has lights and strobes. It has lights, strobes, and a horn. Panel. Well. Four feathers is just going to reuse the existing system. Well, it said they weren't going to do strobes, right? What? They weren't going to do horns. No horn strobes. Reuse existing system sensor brand. So I assume they're going to use the horn strobes that are already in the building. Right. And the question was, does the fire marshal require horn strobes? Okay. Uh -huh. uh, we would go with uh, four feathers if we knew whether or not those strobes were required. Well, but why is one company... Uh, quoting 12 and one company's quoting eight horns and 14 strokes and the other company's not quoting any strokes 12 12 horns and 12 strokes we need to so understand what to engineer it yourself when they come in and put it in i mean right what I'm saying? so they guess they if we have horns and strokes in there already is that right is that yes so That's four right. feathers is just going to use the existing system and not replace everything that's what they're quoting yes but I don't, I mean, I, if the building is two years old, has the building code changed? I don't know what. But the, but the bottom line is they all are to be bidding apples to apples. Correct. So, I, I mean, I don't know why. I mean, the same number 12, of strobes, whatever eight. type they are. We need to spell out what the requirements are and let them bid apples to apples, I would guess. But. Well, I think, I mean, well, I would assume the companies would know what the building codes were. But yeah. But, but if we don't tell them. I mean, somebody, there's a discrepancy there somewhere. Are we missing some from yeah. when yeah, I we don't built know. the building? Or, you know, I, I don't well, know. Wes, it'd be nice to know what, what the fire marshal expects. and then I'll find out. I wasn't can get to with the uh, plans when it was built, but I'm going to offer an educated guess that what we have was minimum at the time, was what was required at the time. Now, if the code has changed, we'll find out. Yeah. And then 
give it back to Rick so Rick can get his specs. Yes. The existing system? If, it, if they say it's good, there's no sense in replacing it. If they can reuse components of it, but yep. as far as the monitoring system in, in the panel, nobody yep. will work on it. Right, right. I understand that part. But the horns and the strobe and stuff are still all good. Should be, yes. I don't see no reason why they wouldn't be. Right. But if, if they reuse it, then the other company ought to be able to do the same thing. And, right. I mean, because somebody, you know, six, seven thousand dollars different, somebody's doing something different. <laughs> We can't tap into that system. You could go put some smoke detectors in there. Okay. You could go put some residential That's smoke it. detectors in there Individual for safety. Alarms, yeah. And that would just be in addition to what the spec is when we get in spec. I heard a fire and then the system still won't go off. It just may not notify anybody. I mean, it's, it's, well, it's not going to go off. It's not pressurized or nothing. It's not going to go off. <clears throat> it won't go off. It kind of developed a mind of its own. The guy's been asleep at 2 o'clock in the morning and they hear banging on the front door. It's, Games of fire because the system has gone off and told them there was a fire in our building. Right. So it's not reliable at all. So we've had that twice over there on our new system. The other night it goes off and it lost like one pound of pressure or something. Right. I'm saying if there is a fire, the sensors on the head are still going to go off, right? I wouldn't be confident in saying they would, no. Tied into what? Tied I don't know. Well, the electronics is tied to the pressure part of the system. But the notification, the notification comes into that panel, and the panel is what's called. Mm -hmm. There's a big panel. You still have pressure on the, on the line. And, uh, and the sprinklers activate off, off the heat, the not sprinklers. Some, the sprinklers. Yeah. Yeah. The sprinklers are going <coughs> to uh, maintain pressure or in that line or however it's set up. But as far as it the system, fire department, it's gonna, the system's yeah. going to go off. So. And it won't wake like up. I say, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, but well, kind of what I was thinking is, can, can we go with the cheapest quote that we have, and in the meantime, if we find out that we need more than that, if the if the uh, requirements have changed, then still come back and upgrade it to. Maybe not any more than what the other quotes are. See what I'm saying? I, I, I'd like for there to be something there right now to you can, people. You could probably spend 50 or $60 on some residential alarms for now. Even that. And, okay. and then put this off two weeks. I, I believe if there's a fire, the sprinkler should activate. Okay. I mean, they're pressured. I don't. If, but, if, as long as we have some way to. That gets the people out of there. Yeah. Well, I can take care of the standalone systems, but. You didn't know that, did you? No. I can put get those standalone uh, system like a smoke detector, basically put in there, so we have something. But it'd be preferable, you know, going forward to go ahead and get the thing fixed. Oh, I, I absolutely agree. We need to get it fixed, yeah. but. I, I kind of like that idea there. Just something there to warn. Get them evacuated. Yeah. 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 Just something there until we figure out exactly what the requirements are and, and exactly what we do have to have. So. I'll get those for you. I'll get them to Rick. Try to get them to him today. Okay. So in this case, I think we would just bring this back. 
Yes, ma'am. Uh, we need to go ahead and do we have money for something temporary? Shall we just do it? Maintenance has typically has some uh, standalone fire extinguisher or fire or smoke alarms that they can yeah. put up. We did that in the substations here a few months back. If we have to go to Atwoods, take the cart or go to Atwoods. You, what do you need? Four or five at ten bucks a piece. And yeah. That's fifty dollars well spent. Mm-hmm. When you get it done. So bring it back. Bring it back. Yeah, I think Not so. table it, bring it back. Yeah. Is that what y'all agree? Yes. All right. We'll bring this back, and, and in the meantime, would you get with maintenance or do whatever you need to, and just, like Gary said, put some, just get some temporaries there, just something to uh, alert the people. We'll do the, it. Uh, system, I mean, a fire. Right. Okay. All right bring this one back in two weeks and in the meantime during that two weeks if you don't mind would you check on their requirements and make sure what we do have to have okay. uh, so I'll get with the fire marshal hopefully today and get it to Rick as quick as I can yeah and get it to Rick and uh, see if that quote that we got from four feathers still covers what uh, what the requirements are okay Thank I'm, the, I'm the next one down, so I'm not moving. All right, you're not, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> Item number 13, deliberate and consider possible action regarding the request from EMS to use money allocated to replace one Lucas machine to purchase a video laryn laryngoscope. Mm -hmm. All right. See, I told you. All right. Our current scope is called a King Vision, and we were uh, notified in October that they were going to stop producing the blade, which is half of the piece of equipment, and it doesn't function without it. They have come up with a stopgap temporary workaround, if you want to call it. Uh, this is not something you need to play with. It's something you need definite, uh, something to sound. Uh, the new scope will also give us the ability to uh, take a picture to verify tube placement. If you're not familiar with laryngoscope, it's what we do. <clears throat> we put a blade in the patient's mouth and visualize their windpipe, and we put a tube in it for them to breathe when they're not able to breathe for themselves. And we've utilized video laryngoscopy for um, 12 years now, and that's how long we've had the King Visions. And like I say, they're revamping I guess they're trying to find a way to charge us more money I don't know why they decided to change it but they did the UE that's come out is a much better product and like I said it gives us better capabilities and the built and the fact that uh, King Vision is discontinuing their blades that's it the uh, quote from UE was like I don't know all the figures 16,000 the price for a new Lucas is 17,212 so we'll just rotate that Lucas into training and make sure it stays there. So you're getting nine of those scopes? What it's saying? Yes. Okay. Is it in the budget, Wes? Wes, is it in the budget? No, where I'm having to move money from capital to so you're working on it? No, it's in the okay. today. It's in the minutes, or in the budget amendments? It's in the budget, just not in the place I need it to be. Move to approve. Motion to Commissioner Hollowell to approve item number 13. Second. Second, Commissioner Hart. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? There are none. Thank you all. Thank you, Wes. So he moved that within his budget. He didn't even need a minute. Yes, when I know about it ahead of time, I can. Yeah, okay. I can help the department. Item number fourteen. Deliberate, deliberate, and consider possible action regarding a Cook County employee blood drive using Carter Blood Care. Commissioner Snubs. 
So in the last few weeks, I've noticed or I've, I've heard that there's a blood shortage all around and it affected a good friend of mine. So it made me think that maybe we should do a blood drive up here to help the blood banks and then help create awareness within all the communities. So um, before, you know, Elizabeth could set that up, I had to run it through court. So I was going to help her do that. We'll let her come up with a date and time and a location. Yeah, and it'd probably be up to, you know, Carter when they can do yeah, it. But she coordinated. Yeah. But uh, I don't know how y'all feel about it, but I think it'd be a good deal. Just a voluntary blood drive. A lot of businesses do it. Yeah. Sound like a plan. It might be something. I don't think so, Judge. I mean, the police departments have police and fire, but I don't know that we have. Might be something we want to do annually or semi annually or something. I make the motion to approve. Motion to approve, Commissioner Art. Second. Second, Commissioner Snuds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And there are none. You'll get to the loop. Okay. Item number 15 is to deliberate and consider possible action regarding the approval of an interlocal agreement with Clear Sky Municipal Utility District Number One of Cook County. All right. Um, so this is something kind of kind of different. You know, we we have interlocal agreements with all the cities around here, so that we can you know help them with projects and such and so forth. Um, this one's going to be entered with the new Mud District. You know, multiple utility district number one going in down south of Valley View and I've checked with with Allison on this and they said that you know, this is perfectly all right he granted he told me the section and the code and everything and the reason they're going to do this road improvement donation through the mud is so that they can get their funds back through the mud tax Whereas if they just do a road donation, the money you know, is poof gone. They can get get their money back through the tax on this way. So, and so it's going to be a it's just a different way to do a road donation. Well, because they're a political subdivision, you can exactly. do it in a local. With them. I'm kind of interested in your number here, though, on the recital. You got a little extra zero in there. Where is that? <laughs> Where at, Gary? Uh, I don't know, the third or fourth whereas down where you're talking about money. Whereas the parties agreed that the district shall contribute 200,000 and no hundreds. It's not a big deal. It just need to drop a zero off of that. Oh, okay. You with me? What did you say, 200,000? Probably a little higher now. Hey, can you make some bigger print? Page 169. Man? Oh yeah, there's no there's no decimal. Yeah. That's weird how that did that. Yeah, I can get that fixed. Yeah, it's not a big deal. Just want to fix it before we get it get it signed. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll get that fixed. But, uh, did you make a motion? Did you? Do I something? will. If y'all don't have any other questions, I'll make a motion that we approve this interlocal agreement. Second. We have a motion, Commissioner Snug. Second, Commissioner Hollowell. Providing fix these two the, uh, the uh, numbers are corrected on the what's that resolution mm -hmm. on the resolution. Do we have a motion? We have a second it's on a, item number fifteen. It's a recital. Interlocal, 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 yeah. interlocal agreement. Okay. We have a uh, motion and a second on the interlocal agreement. Item number fifteen. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And there are none. That motion passes five to zero. Item number 16, can deliberate and consider the possible action regarding the lawn care maintenance contract with Seeger Lawn Care. Commissioner Sicky. Well, back in February when we approved the bid on that, I guess the way we made the motion. 
didn't quite cover it all. So I guess we need to re remake the motion. Is that right, Shelby? Um, to include each time. I, I, I don't think the quotes were apples to apples because a couple of the quotes quoted bi monthly at their price. Unless, unless their price was how much it was going to be each month. Because what court was that on? The other two were bi monthly. It says on the paperwork that they are. What was the minutes that you have highlighted there? What date was that on? Uh, February 12th. station and the sheriff's office by weekly cost and a, and a price so I take it that they're saying that this cost is for bi-weekly that's the way I read it lawn dog says four EMS stations in the justice center a price and then it says Quote is considered as bi monthly properties. Yep, that's exactly. Right. Which again, I assume that the price quoted is for twice a month. Um, the other one doesn't say much. And then Seeger says how much each time. So if you look at it that way, then Seeger is twice the amount of the other two. Martindale was fifteen thirty by weekly and by monthly, and Lawn Dog was fourteen sixty eight, and Seeger is fourteen twenty each time. So, so if you do each time, that's twenty eight hundred and forty dollars. Something that I would like to do, because we have two issues in this court alone, anytime maintenance submits for a bid or something, I'm, I'm going to see what he's giving these people so we can see if the bid matches. You know, if he says, I need A, B, and C on this bid, that way we can make sure that, you know, they all saw the same thing and that's that they're apples to apples. This is just coming up way too often. Um, but yeah, I mean, that throws out our whole bid on this deal. But can we undo it with the motion of the court? Is it, it's contract, isn't it? Well, can't we just tell them they need to do it twice a month? For their, for one amount? For the $55 each time, twice a month. Twice. They are they are doing it that way and billing us fifty five dollars each time. Whereas the other people, their bid meant two times. So, like Lawn Dog said, they'll do it for basically the same price, but their price is for two times. Uh, but that's the way I'm reading it. I yeah. don't. I, that's, well, that's why I read it too. Well, how about the months where you don't do it twice or don't have to do it twice? And then, then they get cut in half. Should we do it? Per, per event, time. per time, or twice a month. I would say per month because there are, yeah. like I say, there that's will be sometimes. Kind of, when I was looking at it, that's what I. That's the way you. July, August, and yeah. probably not going to need more than once, you know. And how does this cover the winter months? I don't know. Yeah. How long is the contract? Is it a year's contract? Well, Technically, no, there is no contract. You just, there is no terms. So how do we terminate what we have 
and get it corrected. You can your rescind suggestion. your uh, offer. You can rescind your award from whatever court. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we need to rescind the award for, for whatever the court date was. Unless you, unless you want me to call and verify those other two really meant that's the price for two times a month. Or, I, you know, or is uh, that the price each time, be, two times a month? It ought to be a monthly charge, a minimum of two cuttings. That's the way the contract should read. That way you don't get this each. Right. We send that out, it ought to be a, what's a monthly cost, minimum of two times. I don't right. disagree, but we've got to fix where we are right now first. Because <laughs> right now we're paying more than, than the company we had before. Somebody's looking at the dates, but they want to make a motion. I don't know who it is, but yeah. I'd rather be able to call and clarify before the other two. Okay. So we take no action. No action. <laughs> so we take no action on item number sixteen. And we're going to bring this back. Two weeks, I would think, because we okay. grass is going to grow. That's right. <laughs> it's the heart of the season, isn't it? Okay. Item number 17. Deliberate and consider possible action regarding broadband, Commissioner Hollowell. I want to move that line item to after executive session. We've got Nortex here. Uh, we need to do a little contract negotiation in executive session. Okay. And possibly come back and if we can work a deal and maybe award something. But it needs to be after executive session, please. Can we do that? Can we do it? Absolutely, we can do it. Okay, okay, you just want to move it, not, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, item number 17 is gonna, we'll pick that up again after executive session then. Item number 18, deliberate and consider possible action regarding various grant funds. Uh, I don't have any. Okay. Item anything. number 18 is no action. Which brings us to the aforementioned item number 19, which is executive session in compliance with Texas Open Meetings Act, Chapter 551, Government Code, Burnham's Texas Code's annotated consultation with county attorney Regarding, and I think we could. We can negotiate contracts. Without? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Do we have anything else that we might want the county attorney? Uh, you can call him if you want to. He may be listening. He may be he here. Is. Or something. Yeah, that's, uh, that's up to you guys. We call the county attorney up just in case. And Shelly, would you like to stay here, please? She needs to stay. Okay. Absolutely. Yep, please do. So we will adjourn into executive session at 10 49.
convene back into normal session at 11 01. With item number 17, which is, first of all, item number 20, deliberate and consider possible action regarding consultation with attorney regarding proposed actions and advice to the court, real property contract being negotiated, or any personnel matters, and that would be no action on item number 20. Item number 17, we'll go back and pick up at this time. Uh, deliberate and consider possible action regarding broadband Mr. Hallwell. Shelly, that the appropriate part would be award the contract? I would make the motion that we award the RFP for broadband to Nortex. Uh, they were the only ones that responded to it and they were kind enough to negotiate with us. Uh, the county will use $1.3 million uh, of ARPA money to improve the unserved areas with fiber optic. Nortex was generous enough to contribute about, or reduce their price by about $129,000. Uh, we're fortunate to be able to team with them. Uh, but I would make the motion that we award them the. Okay. The contract. A, second. Yeah, we have a motion, Commissioner Hollowell, to award the contract to Nortex for seeing again that amount. The county's portion will be 1.3 million. 1.3 million from ARPA funds. From ARPA funds. Right. And the total effort by Nortex to cover Callisburg, Woodbine, and Oak Ridge will be 1.429969. Okay, need any clarification on that, Pam? I want to, I want to be sure that we recognize Nortex because well, they were the sole, sole responder and, and they didn't have to make that concession. So, and so the main thing is Nortex helped us, what we spent, 1.3, who we're serving, who we're enhancing. And since we did leave one area out, I think we need to go ahead and include all three areas that will be covered then, which you have. Right, okay, yeah. Okay. I mean, we can revise it any way you guys want to, but they're, you know, no, I think you yeah, said who we awarded it to, how much it's yeah. going to cost us using ARPA money, right. and the concession they made. That's right. I think it's important to say this with ARPA money, not with our local yeah. tax dollars. Yeah, and, right. and that's exactly. monies that needed to be committed prior to December 31st of this year. Uh, also, we anticipate fiber in the ground by August of 2025. All right, then do I hear a second? I already seconded it. Okay, you want to repeat it? Second. Word? <laughs> <laughs> Good. Okay. I'm glad she's got a recording so she can go sort through it. I understand. It. But okay, we, need we have a second from Commissioner Snugs. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And there are none. Item number 17 passes uh, five to zero. Which leaves item number 21. Do I hear a motion? Goodness. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Commissioner Art. Second. Commissioner Snugs. All in favor? Aye. 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 Be opposed? Excuse there me. are none. Item right, number 21 passes 5 to 0.